Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today it's about the DSEQ3 by TB Pro Audio. And this one here is a dynamic spectral equalizer. And some people ask me for a video about this because I use this sometimes in my videos. And I mostly use this on the master to reduce some uh, harsh frequencies automatically. So it's kind of a filter or an automatic EQ. But I want to show you uh, what this does. So the main thing here, the main window is basically a pre-filter. So the pre-filter means you filter the audio signal before it goes into the analyzer. And the analyzer then analyzes the signal, obviously, and do something to the audio signal at the end. So you don't change the audio signal with this EQ. It's only the EQ for the for the analyzer, basically. Um, so what I do with the with the pre-filter most of the times is getting rid of all the low frequencies. So only the high frequencies are getting catched and are driven into the analyzer. So I have this here on the master bus. And I go here with the threshold down. And you can see the analyzer catches only the frequencies in this, in this range. It's exactly what I want. Because when I pull this down, more frequencies are getting catched also here at the bass and the kick. And um, this plugin tries to reduce these frequencies, of course, as you can see, which is not what I want. I want to have a static kick and sub uh, in my uh, track and only would reduce your harsh frequencies from the hi-hats, from the vocals or something like this. Um, so this is what I do most of the times. Um, so the pre-filter decides what goes into the analyzer. The threshold then changes what goes over the threshold line and everything that exceeds the threshold line is getting analyzed and is getting pushed down by this um, uh, compressor. And you can change the overall compressor setting here with attack and release. And there's also your gain reduction strength, which is probably more like the ratio on a normal um, compressor, I don't know. Um, and also this works in the spectral domain. So you basically have a compressor on each individual frequency, single frequency, right? And you can change that each individual frequency is targeted by using here the selectivity. So you can switch between soft, which is more like an or works like a bandpass filter where you have not a single frequency. So you have multiple frequencies surrounding a, a, a special frequency. So when you have here um, an EQ plus, for instance, right, you have a slow curve on the left and the right side. So the selectivity is basically an EQ factor. So instead of having one single frequency, it's much sharper than that because it's a spectral uh, compressor or spectral equalizer. It's much, much more um, harsh than that. Um, and the soft setting here, where we are at the moment at zero here, is more like, you know, having all the surrounding frequencies also influenced a little bit. So you get a softer, softer curve for something that gets reduced. And um, you can hear when you pull this up here to uh, sharp, you can hear then it's a spectral plug in because you yeah, get all these typical spectral effects. So maybe let's do this. Reduce something. Maybe you switch to delta function here. And the delta function is basically to hear what's getting removed. So it inverts the signal. So instead of having the signal with the removed frequencies, you hear the frequencies that are getting removed. And we get to this later because you can also use this pretty creatively uh, in some of the tracks. Um, so now you can hear basically that it's a spectral plug-in because you can hear this kind of phasing sound that is pretty characteristic for all spectral uh, plug-ins. When you pull this to soft, it sounds more musical. Right, it's it's, it's this typical uh, spectral sound where you have individual frequencies influenced, and it gets the sound. Um, so maybe pull this back here. Uh, gain reduction also to one, which is normally what I use most of the times. 
Um, so then we have here also interesting the slope. The slope is basically the slope of the of the analyzer. So 3.0 is also um, the perfect slope for pink noise. When you go to EQ plus, you have also here tilt setting, right? You can dial in 3 dB per octave. And this is roughly pink noise, a pink noise curve. So um, if you like to make pink noise mixing or you want to balance your mix down to pink noise, then you can use the slope of 3.0. Uh, zero. You can also go up here to 4.5, which is more relaxed and a bit more warmer sound. And this also roughly um, compares here to the tilt setting of 4.5 dB per octave. And with this setting, basically more high, fre more high fre frequency is getting uh, catched here by this analyzer because you tilt the analyzer or the EQ before you go into the analyzer. So um, this is also nice to know. So most of the times I'll go here for uh, 3.0 because I want to catch uh, not that many high frequencies um, anyway. So that's also important. Then the setting here of oversampling OS is also important when you want to bounce down this. You probably don't want to have four times oversampling when you uh, change something on a track or when you create a track also quality here um, we can see here we have at the moment 64 milliseconds of latency and if we change it to ultra 3 we have 512 milliseconds and uh, you don't want to have this when you play keyboard right so keep this in mind so um, to actually use this for my mastering process what i do is i use a dp meter here on the master and i dial in here the loss i want to have the reference value which is depends on the track so for instance minus 10 loss then i analyze the track uh, maybe switch this off here then i analyze the track uh, putting here this to the short term loudness max the maximum loudness value here so that this which changes the gain the gain output and then after this i'm going into the dseq catching here basically all the high frequencies or the harsh frequencies putting this to software Slight release time. And then basically dialing this down until I think it sounds right or it sounds pleasant to my ears. Maybe use A B comparison with a different track. Something like this, right? So I try to basically get rid of some resonances I don't want in my master. And um then after the DSEQ, basically I'm going to use my um, Elevate, Newfangled Elevate uh, Multiband Limiter. Also input gain at zero because everything is changed to the dB meter. I want to get to this reference value which is, which is uh, minus 10 LUFs. And everything that peaks, that's not the average signal value of minus 10 um, and some peaks getting much, much louder than that. Of course, maybe some of them are getting over zero dB. But these peaks I try to catch basically with the DSEQ first, getting this removed here. And then the rest of the peaks are getting caught by this um, limiter. So here we have basically an, um, a limiter. Then there's also a um, filter bank limiter then a transient shaper and then at the end there's a clipper but everything is at zero db as an input or an input gain because everything is driven by this db meter i just try to catch basically what's uh, exceeding this value and then in the end i'm ending up with the loudness level of minus 10 of course and everything that's above that peak peak wise it's getting catched by dseq3 and newfangled um, elevate. So that's basically my 
mastering. I call it, nah, it's not really mastering, but that's my process for the final master. And sometimes I dial in, like I said here, oversampling and ultra three with the quality, but it all depends on how it sounds. So I try these um, settings out and listen to it, how it sounds, try it out on my smartphone, on different headphones, different speakers and so on, and then settle to a certain setting, right? Okay, so this is the mastering process, but I want to show you also what you can do creatively uh, or um, uh, in, in a more like a creative phase where you want to use the DSEQ for some sound designing. So here we have, for instance, the drum bus. And let's imagine you have a dirty drum loop, something, a classic drum loop or something like this, where there's a lot of noise in there and unwanted uh, frequencies, so you can take the opposite approach, you put a DSEQ3 on there, and then maybe disable here the pre, um, the pre EQ, and then catch some frequencies. And you can see these frequencies that are getting catched here are probably the main important frequencies of this um, uh, drum loop. So the basically the meat of the snare and the kick, right? So you enable here this delta function, which brings out the um, uh, removed frequencies. So exactly these frequencies here that are peaking. And you get this uh, spectral sound. Then using here um, attack time selectivity so this is um, this is how it sounds now so you can use this more like a filter to amplify or bringing out um, all the important frequencies and leave all the unwanted frequencies out. So this is how I use it sometimes. Okay, I think that's it for this video. Um, leave a like if you like the video. If you have some questions, then please leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching and give this DSEQ3 here a try. There's also a demo or trial version available on their website. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching and bye.